Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. In a video posted by Oprah, she mentioned Megan sent her a Christmas basket that included some clever blends teas. So we have this lovely Christmas basket. Nice decorations from my neighbor in with a matcha super latte and with a chai super latte and my new favorite golden super latte. And uh, it's called Clever. I think that's how you pronounce it, Clever. And she says, put in the scoop and only add at first a third cup of water, third. Then your frother. Can we get the frother? Froth. And then, after frothing, add more water. Whoa. And you have yourself a golden super latte. Mm. Let's see what's in it. Superfoods. Adaptogens, probiotics. This is mostly um, oat milk and lots of turmeric. You can taste the turmeric. It's delicious, golden. <sighs> Happy holidays, y'all. The small business is not only Californian based, but also a woman lead, mission wellness driven company. We really liked reading about Clever Blend's story. On their website, Clever actually started as a funky pop-up coffee bar. We traveled the California coast, mixing up adaptogenic lats and mushrooms coffees out the back of a van. It was awesome. Our drinks made people feel amazing, but were hard to recreate at home. We needed an easier way to bring these magical elixirs to people's daily rituals, so we hit the kitchen. We set out on a mission to create the most delicious, nutrition-rich instant latte on the planet. After one year of formulation and meticulous ingredient sourcing later, our superlats were born. Megan has invested in Clever Blends. It is a startup that makes instant oat milk lats. Megan's statement, this investment is in support of a passionate female entrepreneur who prioritizes building community alongside her businesses. I'm proud to invest and Hannah's commitment to sourcing ethical ingredients and creating a product that I personally love and has a holistic approach to wellness. I believe in her and I believe in her company. CEO Hannah Mendoza said in a statement, entrepreneurs need funding, but they also need advisors who care deeply about what they are building. I'm grateful to have found both in the Duchess of Sussex. Her passion for what we're creating is palpable and I couldn't imagine a more aligned partnership we're excited for the road ahead. In a statement announcing her investment in the brand, which is led by co-founder and CEO Hannah Mendoza, Megan emphasized her interest in supporting female-founded companies, which received only 2.7% of venture capital funding in 2019. The personal investment is Megan's first to be made public. Another analysis. Why You Won't See Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on The Crown Season 4 of Netflix's The Crown, which was released on November 15, 2020, has dominated the streaming giant's top 10 list. The fourth season captures Queen Elizabeth II and Margaret Thatcher's complex political relationship, as well as the tumultuous marriage of Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Of course, the season is punctuated by the presence of Camilla Parker Bowles, played by the brilliant Emerald Fennel, who counters Diana's apparent innocence with maturity and experience. However, the fictionalized portrayal of this love triangle is so convincing that Charles and Camilla had to turn off Twitter comments because of all the backlash. In July 2020, the New York Times reported that The Crown had been renewed for a sixth season. Creator and writer Peter Morgan said they had to change their original plan of calling it quits after season five. Morgan explained, as we started to discuss the storylines for Series 5, it soon became clear that in order to do justice to the richness and complexity of the story we should go back to the original plan and do six seasons. While writers and showrunners of The Crown are committed to telling the full tale, that doesn't mean every royal is going to make it into the script. Case in point. 
You won't see Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on the hit Netflix series. Here's why. The dust hasn't settled on Prince Harry and Meghan's story. The Crown writer and creator Peter Morgan has a specific rule when it comes to tackling the retelling of the British monarchy. He goes for what hasn't been seen by the public, which is why viewers won't see Prince Charles and Princess Diana's wedding. Why waste time recreating it when you can watch the whole thing on YouTube? What he's interested in is the cloaked life of the royal family. But to get at that mysterious realm, Morgan needs historical distance. When Morgan was asked, in August 2020, if viewers would see Prince Harry and Meghan Markle in the future seasons, he gave a resounding no. Morgan said, Meghan and Harry are in the middle of their journey, and I don't know what their journey is or how it will end. One wishes some happiness, but I'm much more comfortable writing about things that happened at least 20 years ago. I sort of have in my head a 20-year rule. Morgan echoed that sentiment in an October 2020 stating that there's no way modern viewers can understand the historical impact of their exit from royal life. Morgan said, The Meghan and Harry story is nowhere near over yet. And I'm happy that I'm never going to write it. Another report. How much Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are worth after royal split? Between Prince Harry's royal blood and Meghan Markle's successful career as an actress, it's a fair guess that these two are living large. However, after the couple stepped back as senior members of the royal family in January 2020 and relocated to the United States, common folk like us are left wondering if their bank accounts are still thick or if the Queen cut them off. In their shocking Instagram announcement, the pair explained their desire to work to become financially independent while continuing to fully support Her Majesty the Queen. The thing is, Harry and Meghan never have to work another day in their lives if they don't want to. As they make a home for themselves, in the United States, they are focusing on raising their son, Archie, in style, of course. In July 2020, the pair purchased a $14 million estate in Santa Barbara, boasting a tiered rose garden in addition to olive and cypress trees. The home features nine bedrooms, 16 bathrooms, a library, pool, gym, sauna, a tea house, and a children's cottage. Meghan Markle had a nice paycheck before foregoing her acting career. Before Meghan Markle married into the royal family, she was most well known for her role on Suits. She appeared in more than 100 episodes of the show and was reportedly paid $50,000 per episode, equally a total of $450,000 a year. In total, the outlet revealed that her net worth was around $5 million, and that was just from her acting days. Now that she is a royal, Meghan's net worth is combined with that of her husband's, Prince Harry, just in inheritances from his mother Princess Diana and his late great-grandmother the Queen Mother, Harry is worth around $25 to $40 million. In addition to the funds left for him, Harry earned $50,000 a year while working as a captain, in the British Army. So, if his net worth is around $30 million, give or take, plus Meghan's honest $5 million, that means the couple has a total net worth of around $35 million. Among the many benefits of being a part of the royal family, all their royal-related expenses are covered by the British government, meaning that the royals seldom swipe their own debit cards. That, however, isn't exactly the case anymore. Meghan and Harry don't have access to all royal luxuries since stepping back. Since Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have stepped back from their royal duties, they no longer have their expenses covered by the British. The couple is no longer funded by the Sovereign Grant, which previously accounted for 5% of the Sussex's administrative and household costs. This means Meghan and Harry are going to have to break out their dusty debit cards next time. It was previously assumed that they would continue to acquire funds from the Duchy of Cornwall, which is a vast portfolio of land and assets that provides an income for the Prince of Wales and his sons, but the outlet reported that the arrangement has since been ceased. After departing from royal life, the pair repaid $3 million of taxpayer funds, previously spent on renovating Frogmore Cottage, the couple's UK residence that sits on the Windsor estate. Additionally, Meghan and Harry can no longer use the Sussex royal brand, which could have brought in some big bucks. Meghan and Harry have big plans to bring in more income. Despite the slight hiccup in their quest to become financially independent, 
Meghan and Harry have a couple of other business ventures in the works. The couple signed a multi-year deal with Netflix. The pair are in the process of setting up their very own production company that will develop shows for the streaming service, from documentaries to children's programs. Although the value of the deal has yet to be disclosed, a source told the outlet that their Netflix deal allowed them to pay back the $3 million used to renovate Frogmore Cottage in full. In addition to their new production company and business dealings with Netflix, it's likely the pair will continue to do speaking engagements for the right price. In June 2020, both Meghan and Harry signed with the Harry Walker Agency, which also represents the likes of Barack and Michelle Obama and Bill and Hillary Clinton. The Sussex's fee per speech is expected to be around $1 million. Seems like they will be all right without the help of the royal family, after all. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Stop.